Hello and welcome back to my craft room. It's time for chapter four, I think we're on, of my Trash Tome series. Um, it's starting to look really good now. Let me show you, uh, let me show you where I've got to. Well, I <laughs> it's starting to look really good. <laughs> it's, what I mean is it's starting to look like what I had in my head. <laughs> for me, that's good. I think some people might find it a bit leery. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> so last time I finished filming, I think I'd gone through and started um, uh, doodling and um, adding details to the first signature. I've now gone through and finished all three signatures. Um, I am just going to, there's just a few more little little doodles I want to add, which I thought I'd do, I'd do now. What I'm going to do is start with the last one for reasons which will become obvious in a minute. <laughs> Some kind of mysterious body part, doesn't it? <laughs> I don't know. I got very much into the zone and really enjoyed all this doodling. Well, I'm going to try and just go through this reasonably quickly and not waffle on too much. And um, so I've just added, now this little shape here and here, let's move my head out of the way. Um, it's a little crisscross thing. I discovered that last it's the last one I did and I, I really enjoyed that. So it's a nice little bit of nice little touch. And I want to go back in and add some of that crisscross sort of cross hatching doodle to the other signatures, which is why I've started with this one, because then I'll do it as I go through. Yeah, I tried to um, end up with a good um, sort of contrast between lights and darks. Um, I already had lots of colour. I wanted some uh, pops of black and white, some bits of interesting texture and stuff. Um, I think I've kind of got what I wanted out of it. A lot of these, well, especially these ones with the big black, will end up having um, pop out elements on them and stuff. Obviously, the, the Frankenstein dolls are going to be on there. I might decide some of them are a bit much, and I just will want to just kind of add a bit of white gesso to the main area of the page. Um, so that the dolls will stand out more against it. We'll, we'll see as, as I go along. This is yeah. This is kind of what I had in mind at this stage. This is about about where I wanted it to be. So that's the end of that signature. And now as I go, well, I've done one on there, but as I go through, I want to add some of these little crisscrosses to all of them. So with these, you know, sometimes I was picking, a, if I felt I wanted a little bit of a contrast colour on there, I was doing the cross hatch in that. But other times it would just be in the same kind of colour as the background. It's just more of a subtle detail. So for this one, I could go, I could use this pink paint pen and just put it here like this. So it doesn't, you know, it doesn't jump out at you, but... This is one of my favourite pages actually, I really like this one, I don't know why. <laughs> this one I'm going to use a little bit of purple to pick up that purple there. And it's sort of got magenta up there, so. <laughs> really enjoying this fluorescent pink. Ooh. Got, you can't if you can see it on the camera to an extent but um in real life all the little details pop a lot a lot more i think a bit of pink on here as well <laughs> a bit up there too yeah it probably is a little bit a little bit leery for some people's taste but hey ho my book. So yeah, that's the kind of thing I've been um, I've been doing, and 
I won't sort of carry on and do that now because this is going to get way too long. Um, but I can I can add those extra little details in once the book is put together if I want to anyway. I just wanted to show you that little bit. So I'm just going to decide what order I want these to go in. Oh, I, haven't, I haven't gone through it all, have I? Oh. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to stop with the doodling now because that's all going to take, uh, take too long. I can go back and do that afterwards. Um, I'll just do a quick whip through so that you can see. And there's our signature. That's another one of my favourite ones, I think like this I like that it I can put it different ways around I can do I can fold it that way as well if I want to I like it both ways these also tuck down so I don't have to have them all sticking up if I don't want to obviously they'll tuck down on that side too We'll do the same. Another little favourite part was that I just like these peekaboo things. <laughs> and again, I could put that in whatever kind of format I like. So, the big thing now is to get these into a cover. I'm so cold in this day. I've got my, I've got my top on, my jumper. I've got a little vest underneath. I've also got my pom pom crochet blanket over my knees. I'm so cold, and I'm too mean to put the heating on. Okay, so my idea is that I want to use this bit of packaging to make the cover. Um, and I think at the moment I was going to cover it with paper or something. Um, but what I've decided to do is just leave it playing card for now because I think I can paint it afterwards. I think I just want to see how I go with the dolls and things. Once I start adding my Frankenstein girls in there, I might decide I want to put a doll on the front. I might just want a big title on the front. Um, I might just want it to look like a box because it is a trash tome. So I'm, I... I think I need to get it into the cover and put it all together now before I start working on the dolls and the um, pop-up elements and things. But I'm going to leave my options open as regards how I'm going to decorate the cover. So what I need to do now is um, take this box apart. I'm going to see if I can keep some of this tape because I like the idea of having fragile look across one of the pages or something perhaps and also I quite like this dim effect so I'm going to keep them carefully to one side and see if I can incorporate them in some way whoops sorry a the wobble now is this going to peel off yes one bit anyway lovely now I've got a nice clean bit of cardboard. Rather than make it just like a normal book cover, I might keep this this kind of format where you've got the, the cover fold thing. But this little strip here isn't deep enough to accommodate my three signatures and leave a bit of space. So I need to make that deeper. Um, I don't need the flaps coming down at all, so I'm going to cut it down to about, about a foot. I made sure nothing went higher than a foot or um, 30 centimetres ish so I need to cut these off and I need to make these this piece that folds here is, that's going to become the spine needs to be deeper at least twice as deep and then I need to have it exactly the same on the other side so that this so that this folds over here I think I need to bring that right a bit okay so um, and then um, the plan is if I go to the middle 
of one of these signatures. There we go, that's the middle. You can just see, you can see the thread just about that I've, oh, I've sewn it together. I'm going to use the same holes. So I've got one there, one there, and one there. I'm going to use those same holes to sew the signatures into the spine. A horrible feeling, I threw my little temporary template away, so I will have to make another one. So first things first, let's get this cardboard cut down to a manageable size. I'm going to spend a bit of time cutting this down. You don't don't need to watch me doing this. Essentially, I'm going to cut it down to 31 centimetres this way. I want a 31 centimetre back that way. And then I want this bit that will be this area that will become the spine and this area that will fold. So they're both folding together to be twice the width that they are at the moment, I think. Um, so I'm going to do that, beat this into some kind of shape and then when I come back to the sort of sewing it in bit I'll, uh, I'll come back and show you. Right, that was a bit of a battle. There's no way I could have done that on the camera. I wouldn't have had enough room. So I've just, I've cut it to size. It's probably slightly smaller than it should be because this is picking out a little bit, but that's okay. <laughs> it's my trash term, it doesn't matter. Now I've noticed that, handily, this packaging obviously is made to be a bit adaptable so you can see there's these kind of... Uh, score marks down there hopefully the cameras there we go the camera's sort of picking it up on either side so i'm just gonna um fold them fold it fold the card at uh, a different probably mm, i want it to be thick enough to enclose all of my three signatures so it's quite thick there um and allow a bit for bulk that you know as I put things into the book the pop-up elements and stuff like that it's going to get thicker so I think maybe not two of those perforate perforations those score lines I'm going to go for three I'm going to fold it there it's really nice having that um, that fold mark brilliant bonus so that will now become my spine That's, that's worked out quite nicely because it's sort of giving me a rounded, like a rounded spine. Well, I think it will be once I've finished, and I can probably um, add. Like you see, if you if you imagine a hardback book, you you sometimes get that thing. We've got the main fabric that the book is covered with here, and then you've got that extra piece in the contrast. It comes around the spine and sort of finishes here. I could do that with this as well, but uh, that'll be a bit further down the line. What I want to do now is get these signatures sewn into this cover so that I've got everything all in one piece and I've got my my book ready to work in, really. I'm going to stitch my um, signatures in one in each of these sections I think totally making this up as I go along so I want this one which is going to be the front to be sewn into this piece here what I've, when I've made books before I've got the signatures all folded together but not stitched together I stitch them together as I stitch them into the spine um, Mary, Mary Flower's tip was to stitch them together first she used the tacky stitch here and here um, and then stitch them into the spine to make it much more manageable, which I thought was a really good tip. But I didn't want to have extra tacking stitches in these, so I've just used, I'm, I'm hoping to use the same holes that I used to stitch the pages together to stitch them into this cover now. I've got my little sharp, little sharp pokey tool I've had for years and years, and then this one's um, not quite so sharp, but it, it gives me a bigger hole. So I'll use the sharp one first. I need to make sure it's lined up here. Well, I don't want anything sticking out the bottom. I don't mind if things stick out the top, but I don't want them sticking out the bottom so that it can sit on a shelf because I want to be able to store it somewhere. So It's quite hard to see the holes now. I think that's one, that's one, that's one. Okay. So I'm going to go through this again where I stitch these pages together and then into 
this last little folded section that I've got here. I mean, whatever you, if you're doing this with me, you'll be using different materials, whatever you've managed to achieve out of your recycling bin, and you might have to find a slightly different process to make it work. This is just how I'm making this work. That's the first hole. I'm trying to make it fairly central in that section of card. I hope this is gonna work. And then the last hole. So I'm just doing a really simple binding where you just need these three. Whoops. Line that up. There we go. Right. Let's put that out of the way for a minute. So I've got my three holes. Think what I'm going to do is make the three holes in the other two sections at the same time because I can just eyeball these. Just make them a bit bigger. I'm going to follow the same process that I used to stitch these each of these signatures together in the first place. So if you want to have a better look at this. Um, check out my chapter one <laughs> of this um, little trash tome series. I'm going to put all of the videos in a trash tome. Well, that I already have. I've made a playlist called Trash Tome, so you'll find it all in there. Um, so I'm going to start from the outside. It might get a bit. I'm going to. Try, I'll try to film it, but it might get a little bit awkward. Um, so as I say, if you can't see properly, check out that first video. It will probably explain it better. Um, to stitch them together I'm going to use this crochet thread that I've got and now I've lost my little needle box. Where's my little needle box gone? Well I have no idea where that needle box is hiding itself but while I was scrabbling on the floor looking for it oh there it is now I find it typical. Anyway while I was on the floor scrabbling around I found this needle which is probably going to be better actually. So it's quite long quite strong it's got a reasonable point on it but I don't need a sharp point and uh, most importantly it's got a nice big eye to get that thread through easily. I'm going to do at least four times the length of this of this book. Right, I'm going to start in the middle I hope I've gotten this right. So I'm, I'm doing this top one first because it's going this is going to be the first signature you'll see when you open the book so I'm going in this middle hole pulling my needle through but I'm leaving a good good long end like that really quite quite long so I don't want to accidentally pull it through and then let's get this bit out there. and then I'm going through the corresponding middle hole in the book and because the book is already stitched together it should make this stage a lot easier than it would be otherwise it's just get open to the middle that's it so going into that middle hole and coming out in the center of the book pull that through this top hole. I could go down to the bottom hole first, doesn't really matter. So the top hole is, is here. So let's get through the book first. All the way from the centre of the book. Ooh. And out through the spine. So that isn't catching this one because this book obviously is a strange shape and it only got caught by two of the holes <laughs> and now I'm going through the corresponding hole in my cardboard cover to the outside keep putting it tight as I go along the spine on the outside now and now I'm going to go back in through that middle hole And 
in through the middle hole of the book. This is a bit laborious, but you know, it's not really difficult though. And it's quite satisfying to make your own book. If you want an easier option than this, and you, if you want to follow on along with the idea of this project, but you don't want to start a book from scratch, Dolores is going to be doing a different version where she's adapting um, a ready-made book and adding fun edges to it. I think so you could follow that idea instead. I will leave a link to Dolores' channel. I didn't mention at the beginning of this one because I'm kind of assuming if you're watching this you've seen the others so you'll know but just in case you don't this is um, part of a project I'm doing in collaboration with Dolores J Rush here on YouTube I will leave a link to her channel I'll leave a link to her playlist so she's putting her collaboration videos on a playlist called um, DJ or paper doll art I think it is I will leave a link to it and you need to go straight if you want to just go to the collab videos you need to go to number 19 on that list apparently so and back to the outside okay so now I've gone into the middle out through here into the middle again and then out through here I'm just going to make sure everything's all nice and tight and then I'm going to finish it. I don't need to go in again. I'm going to put my needle under there. I'm just going to, before I tie a knot, I'm just going to make sure everything's nice and tight all the way through. So I just do that by opening up. I'm holding on to these, I'm holding on to these really tightly here and I'm just opening up one page at a time. Because sometimes you find there's suddenly a loose bit here you didn't know you had. Yeah, it's looking pretty good, I think. There we go. So now I just need to tie a couple of knots here to secure this. Oh, I pulled that too tight and obviously it didn't like it. Well, I'm going to have to do that again unless I can manage to, because I have got a long end, I wonder if I can manage to retrieve it. I might be able to pull this all through because I've got enough of a enough of an end I might be able to adjust this or I might just start again but anyway that is what I'll do next time I won't pull it quite so hard <laughs> with this thread this you can't be as strong as the thread I used last time so I'm going to go through and do that again and then I'm going to repeat it with the next two signatures and then I'll come back and show you what's next right um I've sorted this out it wasn't too bad in the end actually um and this is how it's looking now. So I've, I've actually scored quite a few folds, folded and scored quite a few lines on this side and um, not quite so many on this side uh, so that I can fold it over and even if it gets quite fat there's still plenty of room. Um, I'm going to, I probably will cut this off a bit more once I, I know how fat it's going to get and then I'll decide what I'm going to do for a closure and, and uh, to decorate the cover generally but this is enough for now to keep it all together so I'm quite happy with that quite pleased with how that's gone um let's just do a quick flick through um so uh, I think this has probably will have gone on long enough already um, so I'm going to leave it there for today um, my next step is going to be putting in a few bits and bobs like I've got um, uh, recycled envelopes to put in um, I've got some scraps of old scrapbooking paper and things that I'm gonna just cut and ju I'll just cut little squares and strips off and and literally just staple them to the corners of the pages so let me just if I just do one so I'll just cut a piece like that and uh, find a likely page 
I don't like pink on that. Maybe there, maybe there. And I'll just, I'll, I'll literally get a couple of staples. One there and one there. And then you can just tuck things inside. So that's the kind of thing I'll be doing. Um, but I think that'll be, that'll be for next time now because I don't want to make these, these videos too long. At the moment I'm quite happy that I've got this so that um, I've got room to open everything out and then it'll all fold back in and be nicely contained within these within these covers and it will still comfortably sit on a on a shelf in my craft room. So these are these bits that stick out too far. They just fold in. Yeah. And I could leave the eyes sticking out the top of it if I've got if it's on a tall enough shelf. But if it's not, they'll just all fold in. And everything will be protected by this uh, by this cover. Then I, I can have a bit of it. Once I'm more sure where the design is going, I can have a bit of a think about exactly what I want to do with the cover that needs to fold in as well. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So if I fold it all together like that, it's all nice and neat and contained. Brutal. And it doesn't actually stick up. Yeah, it barely sticks out the top. So that's that's perfect. So uh, that's it from me today. I hope you enjoyed that. If you're making a trash tome of any kind or um, if you're just going to join in and do a page or two in your art journal or something and do some Frankenstein dolls with me later, I do hope you'll think about sharing it on the Arty Farty Annie group on Facebook. I will leave a link to that as well. And like I said before, to Dolores' playlist as well. Um, I don't. I think at the moment she's just started adding edges to her to the planner that she's using for her for the base of her book and um, I don't think there are any more videos up yet but just to keep on that um so thanks very much again for joining me um hope you enjoyed that and I will see you again really soon